now this Brett and I were kind of talking this before the show. The big possible, you know, back and forth battle maybe between a guy like Jay Noli who has been a holdover. He's coming back. He's been on the Whitecaps. He's he's shown shown uh, some great promise. Yet you have a, a veteran like Joe Cannon showing up. Um, who do you see starting there? Well, <laughs> it's kind of funny that you mentioned Joe uh, because uh, we've uh, the Whitecaps are in the middle of a, a really strong marketing campaign right now, and and the Southsiders as a response to that have uh, we've been pushing for them to do a particular publicity stunt which involves shooting Joe Cannon out of a cannon. <laughs> and, uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've, 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 we've put up a hashtag on Twitter, shoot Joe Cannon out of a cannon, and it's really picked up here in Vancouver. And, uh, you know, he's aware of it, and he's, uh, you know, we, we joke with him that it's really got nothing to do with the preference to put Nolly in that or anything like that. But, uh, you know, he's been a good sport about it, and he says if we get 10,000 tweets on that uh, hashtag, uh, he'll actually consider going for it. And, uh, so uh, we've got our first thousand. <laughs> We're going for ten, and uh, no, Joe's uh, Joe's Joe's phenomenal. Uh, he's a guy that has really reached out to uh, the Southsiders in particular. Um, he's arrived here in Vancouver, and he wants to connect with the people here, and that's always great to see. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of actually resolving the the, the, the goaltending situation here, um, you know, Jay is Jay is a dynamite keeper. He really is, yeah. and uh, you know, I think we're going to be in for a real, real keepers battle here to see who takes first spot. Yeah. Um, now, Joe is—he uh, just recently took a knock to the head. He got some stitches uh, after uh, taking a knock in training. So, uh, I think um, we probably would have seen him uh, in the net uh, a little sooner, uh, but uh, uh, I'd anticipate that we do see some of him very soon, very soon. I know the the ankle's been a problem. Uh, that seems to be on the mend. Uh, the stitches uh, in the head from the other day. Uh, we'll see how long that takes. But uh, in the meantime, Nolly's been out there proving himself. I mean, we've had a, a bit of a uh, a bad run uh, the past few games in preseason. But uh, Nolly's a guy that he keeps his composure. He runs his back line, uh, you know, like a like a little drill sergeant. And uh, he is not to be underestimated. Uh, yeah. You know, yes, he's been in Division Two for a few years, but this guy's top notch, absolutely top notch. No, no, I have a quick ahead, question. Bro. Since we're talking about the uh, rosters and everything like that, uh, how's uh, how's Thorington working up there in Vancouver? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, by all accounts, yeah, he's the uh, kind of workhorse mm-hmm. you know, that that uh, Tater likes having on his team. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it works out for Thorington. I really hope he sticks around. Yeah, because he, he has been a little bit injury prone, so hopefully that yep. that turns around. But you also have a, uh, and of course we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll try to make this as quick as possible because I want to ask about uh, uh, your expectations for the season. Maybe you can kind of uh, uh, lead that after you hear, hear this question because you have a guys you have guys like Camilio uh, da Silva uh, who are you know they they're just coming in from the K league where you know he had a kind of a rough season you have some other forwards like Cornelius uh, Bennett who are from the residency program so a lot of potential there possible even I think you guys even had a Chinese uh, player a uh, long uh, time come in for trial as well time, yeah yeah so how do you yeah I mean, we're, we're, we're really tempted to put a banner out for him that says we love you long time but <laughs> <laughs> Really, really tempted to do that one. I don't know how well that would be received, but uh, the fact is, the um, one guy that we have not seen a heck of a lot of uh, yet. Uh, I know he's been nursing an injury, and I know he's also been off on international duty as well. Cornelius Stewart. Um, this is a guy uh, from St. Vincent Grenadines. Came to Vancouver a couple years ago. Young kid and quick as lightning. Yeah. Uh, he does need to do some work on his. Uh, on his uh, control and his accuracy. But if uh, you give him the opportunity to run at defenders, you really, I mean, you're gonna, your eyes are going to pop out of your head. This oh. kid has speed on him that is just unparalleled. Mm. And uh, Vancouver, you know, we've, we've really been uh, fortunate to have a, an opportunity to look at guys like him uh, uh, who have just this lightning fast foot speed. Another guy who's in our um, PDL um, residency program right now, Randy Edwini Bonsu, Canadian kid out of Edmonton, hmm. and uh, you know he can probably match uh, Cornelius Stewart uh, foot for foot. Wow. 
Uh, and if we manage to get the two of them on the pitch at the same time, I mean, it's, it's going to be a real cracker to watch for sure. So, so what you're saying is Vancouver has their own version of Dane Richardson. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I think that uh, we're going to be uh, having no shortage of foot speed for sure. Wes Knight's another guy uh, who uh, has some real blinding pace. Too. Uh, he came up, uh, he's been with us for a few years. He was scooped up in the um, combine, uh, the MLS combine a few years ago. And uh, he's a, a, an immense fan favorite for us here. Uh, Wes is a, a down-to-earth, great guy. Yeah. And he's got a throwing arm on him that you, I mean, he'll, he'll throw it at the net from the opposite end. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's got a, a, a pair of arms you need to watch out for. But, uh, <laughs> it's the feet, too, right? He's got right. great speed. It's something that, that Vancouver's really been fortunate with. Uh, athletic, quick guys. And, uh, you know, uh, these are the kind of guys that Peter Torgerson likes to put out and he will run at you all match, wear you down until we get the opportunities. So, yeah, I think we're in for some entertaining football in uh, Vancouver for sure. Could could be, and I guess you know, because it is, it's it's uh, a whole new season, so there are a lot of question marks. So, if you had to make a prediction about expectations this season, uh, where do you think you guys are going to battle for a playoff spot? How far how far is this going to go this year? Well, you know, I think that uh, it's really going to hinge on what kind of firepower we bring in over the next uh, couple weeks, couple months, uh, you know, as these uh, transfer windows uh, open and close. Um, as it stands now, uh, we have a real firepower problem. And with that existing problem in place, I can't see us making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. We're gonna be a, we would be a very strong defensive team. Uh, you know, a very uh, uh, physically tiring team to play against. But if there's no finish, you're not going to win matches. Right. Now, I think if they uh, if they do go ahead and manage to bring in one, two, three proven goal scorers, mm. I think you could see a, a real surprising run through the playoffs because at the back we're solid, in the mid we're solid. It's up front where we're lacking, and until that question mark is erased from the chalkboard. Uh, you know, it's going to be really difficult to see where we go. My my gut tells me that we're probably going to be creeping into the playoffs at the bottom end, which would be great. Uh, in terms of uh, Cascadia Cup between uh, us, Seattle, and Portland, I think we're looking at a first or a second place finish. And with our uh, Canadian Championship that uh, involves us, Toronto FC, Edmonton, and Montreal Impact, uh, I'm thinking first or second again uh and i'm really hoping for first because we're long overdue yeah well, with, ha- with half with half year with uh i think you guys have only signed like half of your full-time roster right now so you guys have plenty of uh of uh scouting and signing to go uh you definitely could bring in some firepower uh but i know here in the states we have a saying that goes uh defense wins championships you can have the best offensive you know tandem in the world but if you don't have a defense to back it up it's not going to amount to anything. So the fact that you get yeah. a solid defense and a solid midfield, that's saying a lot right there. Yeah, well, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're keeping some, uh, you know, optimism about the situation right now. I mean, uh, it, it's frustrating because you, you, you want results yesterday, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I mean, as a fan, you, you want everything in place and you want to be ready to go. We're still a month away from kicking the ball. Yeah. And uh, the thing that we have to remind ourselves here in Vancouver is that uh, – you look at the ownership group that's in place and the, you know, the expertise of Paul Barber, who they've brought in as CEO. Uh, this is a club that is very, very focused in terms of what kind of team they want to build. And, uh, you know, if, if there aren't strikers in place now, uh, that's probably just a temporary blip on the radar. Uh, you know, there's, the problem here isn't uh, incompetence or, or an inability to attract someone to Vancouver. Um, you know, I think this has just been a matter of uh, waiting for the right opportunities to snatch someone up, and it will come. And when it happens, it's going to be great for the fans. All you got to do, uh, John, is get them in the airport and uh, let them look at the uh, surroundings, and uh, they'll want to stay. I've been named uh, the most livable city in the world for the five years running. Uh, yeah. it was just announced the other day. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, it's kind of odd to hear that. You know, I you know I live here, and uh, you know, like every other city, we've got our problems, and uh, we've got areas that, that could be improved. But uh, you know, natural beauty, uh, you know, 
mountains and rivers and, and oceans, you name it, it's, it's here. And, uh, you know, the world got a little bit of a peek at it during the Olympics with the television coverage that uh, was uh, here in Vancouver during that time. Right. And, uh, but, you know, Vancouver really shines in the summer, to be perfectly honest. Like, there's just tons of stuff to do here, and it's a fantastic place to live, no yeah. question. We are unfortunately, John, we're out of time, as often happens with us. Uh, we've gone over, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay. We'll 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 edit it all in. We'll make it happen. I won't tell anyone if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully, John, you'll you'll join us throughout the season. We'll, we'd love to have you back to kind of talk about things as things develop uh, further on. And uh, we're we're least, all yeah yeah we're all looking forward. Yeah, I'd to be it. I'd be I'd be thrilled. And if you can just ask your listeners to uh, remember. Shoot Joe Cannon out of a cannon. Put that on Twitter. That would really, really help us out. You, know, you, shoot, us, you shoot us a link, which uh, what the Twitter account is to do everything, and we'll publish it. Absolutely. We'll <laughs> even. I, I want to see that. We'll even put a picture up of Joe Cannon being shot out of a cannon. How's that? That would be fantastic. <laughs> it is a vidcast, so we get to do some visuals. But, uh, again, thanks for coming on, and uh, like I said, uh, come back and visit. No problem. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care, John.